If you feel like a mushroom kept in the dark and fed with bullshit, this is your sunlight. If life is stuck in a traffic, this is the way out of that log jam. If you hate complicated stuff, this is the simplicity you are looking for. A podcast for the wise, woke and the wobbly. It's a simple, slow burn, straight talk. Be it the magic of the movies, the craziness of cricket, the subtlety of art or the complexity of the world around us. No topic is taboo. No question is out of syllabus. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Iron Man experience. And if you like what you hear, then don't share with those who don't care. You know, slow burn podcasts like this one, it's incredibly difficult to have a discussion around an India-Pakistan match without standing up from your seat or raising your voice or having this extra emotion. As much as we'd like to tone it down and keep it soft and normal and slow paced and slow burn, matches like this really mess up your script. Right? So I'm going to try and keep it as sane as possible for an absolute insane experience that all of us witnessed yesterday. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are going to do a recap of the T20 match, a league match which stirred up a billion emotions yesterday night between India and Pakistan at the MCG. We'll talk about the Indian bowling, the Indian batting, Pakistani bowling, Pakistani batting, and of course, Mr. Virat Kohli. Over and above the key mindsets of the match and what to look forward to. These are the few points and topics that we'll cover in this podcast. If I were to sum up the entire experience, it would be in these three words, heartbeats, tears, and single mod. Single word is two words, but you get the drift. Heartbeats went up and down, tears for obvious reasons, and such a fine, classy innings taken to a pure single malt. That's the closest reference I can give to what happened yesterday. Simply put, it was a mix of emotions, pure class, lot of heart, and in some places, it just blew your mind off that how can a script be written like this or this is drama at its best. This is emotion at its best. It's a freaking league match. A billion plus people tune in to watch this. There is pandemonium. There is chaos. There is madness. There is frenzy, frenetic activity globally. Twitter is a buzz. Like the top 10 trends are for the match. There is commentary, there is expert opinions, people who have never ever watched the match sit and sit glued to the television, people who have always detested watching this particular format of the game, T20, thinking it to be just a slam bam kind of an affair, they tune into the game. Long into the night when the game is over, people are still talking about it. The next day morning, people are still talking about it. That, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the impact of a classic India-Pakistan cricket match. I don't know if Super Bowl fans have had similar experiences or the rivalry is that intense or that long between two teams. But if ever there was a global sport which such riled up heightened emotions, this had to be it. It's just not the 92,000 people in the stadium. There were about a billion watching on digital platforms, could be on televisions and some other form of communication and broadcasting. So the madness was, it was feverish in the real sense of the word. The superstitions galore, people kept their fingers crossed, the nails were bleeding. People wore the same t-shirts, Some people sat in the same space, there they moved from where the lucky position was and a whole bunch of things. And that is why it is such a broadcaster's delight to present an India-Pakistan match. The coverage of the match itself started from 7 a.m. India time for a match which began at 12.30, so almost four and a half hours later. So that tells you how far and how much this spot, this particular encounter is appreciated across the globe. Now, with the, the emotions aside, 
let us try and see what actually happened in the match. Let's examine the Indian bowling up front. They say what matters is the size of the fight in the dog, not the size of the dog in the fight. And boy, did our new young talented pacer, Mr. Arshdeep Singh, give a fight to the opposition. After the horrific dropped catch, the mental trauma, the dilemma that he must have gone through, powered through that and came in, made such a stellar World Cup debut. You know, I have to stand up and clap. What an amazing control over his emotions for such a youngster. Really good, stellar progress that he has made. And he is building up to be the top dog moving forward. For now, I think the first eight or ten deliveries were absolutely unplayable. They were just swinging all over. The, in some sense, you know, kind of it is India's answer to what Shahin Shah Afridi's spell was back then in Dubai. So it kind of neutralized it. If this spell was so critical, if that impact did not happen, then, you know, it, that Shahin Shah spell w- would develop into a bigger legend, you know, as Team Pakistan and the Pakistani audience have always, you know, f- blown it up larger than proportions, right? I mean, of course, it was a good spell. Let's not take any credit away from that. I'm not saying that, but they have milked that for a very long time and Shahin Shah's head must have been chewed by now that, oh my God, rise of the falcon and all. So much a documentary being made. Dude, you just bowled one good spell in one league match. And if you look at it with the same lens, that holds true for Rashdeep as well. But there is both sides where people appreciate the impact like they say in at work, the business impact, right? In this case, the psychological impact of getting uh, Babarazam out so early, their top dog, it, it has to be a big confidence booster, as was the case with Shahin Shah Freedy dismissing Rohit Sharma and KL Rahul. And so once Mohammad Rizwan got uh, dismissed, we were like, okay, this seems like game on in getting the top two batsmen for this youngster was a commendable uh, commendable thing to do in his World Cup debut with 92,000 people screaming uh, their lungs out and knowing fully well that a billion people are watching. But we didn't stop there. We pushed and pushed and we really choked the Pakistani batsmen until Shan Masood, Shan middle name Lucky Masood, I think he must have been dropped and uh, could have been out at least two or three times. Mr. Riftakar Ahmad came to the party and what determination. Really, really appreciated his resolve to hang in there. The pressure must have been intense, immense pressure. But he hung in there, he hung in there. That's what great matches do to you. They increase your resolve until Mr. Mohammad Shami turned up to the party and got him out followed by Mr. Hardik Pandey. And therefore, the next few dismissals were rather quick and it was almost like self-imploding. And one thought that Pakistan would uh, fold up within like 110, 120. But as has been the case, we haven't really gone in for the kill when we could have. I mean, it's easier said than done. No doubt, no two ways about it. But I still feel that those last 20, 30 runs could have been absolutely choked and they would have panicked. They were on collision course. They were on panic mode. So bowling short and at slow pace wasn't going to deter them. I think one needed to continue to bowl full and let the ball do the talking. It was still swinging. I thought it would probably stop swinging around the fourth, fifth over as is the case with white balls. But it was. And there was something we couldn't have avoided the spinners. Akshar had a bad day. But it was it is more of mind over matter. right? I mean, that's what you uh, look in these kind of matches. So I thought a score of 159 was a subpar. But in a match like India-Pakistan, nothing is subpar. Right? Everything is anything above 120, 130 would have been a pressure cooker situation because it's a World Cup match and with the history of having lost the previous match and the additional pressure. 
there that 120 130 score would sound more like 160 170 and so 159 was more like a 170 180 kind of a score psychologically speaking but to sum up the bowling effort for india i think lots of positives to take away claps to uh, all the bowlers especially ashdeep singh bhuvneshwar kumar did well and so did hardik pandya despite you know giving away some runs and trying to get cocky at some point but i i guess they did the job now it was up to the batsmen let's see what they did you know before the match started i had listed down three don'ts for our batters one was don't play outside the off stump one was switch on don't be like switched off switch on from ball one and the third one was move faster the bat speed and exactly that's what happened all the f- top two batsmen and top three excluding mr virat kohli and we'll come to that in a bit did exactly that kl rahul seems to be absolutely out of space i think he's letting the pressure get to him no doubting his talent and ability but the pressure is getting to him and his bat speed and his defensive approach is doing him in and now he's being bowled on consecutive occasions in a similar fashion right so cause for concern in the head space mr rohit sharma i don't know if, you know his batting is taken a dip for some time now and it was good until somewhere early last year and then i think post all this who ha about captaincy and shift and everything his ind- individual batting has gone down and i've always maintained that he's probably put on some extra weight as well and his hand eye coordination seems to have gone down and notably this time he did not take the strike to shain shafri bad idea bad 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 idea you cannot let your opposition know that you want to avoid them in world cricket in any sport there is no hiding right so you had to take strike you have to figure out if a tall left armer is bowling at 150 clicks on your pads you know the syllabus he's not going to bowl out of the syllabus because in his mind he's thinking if i bowl full pitch it up ball will do the trick and i'll get my wicket that's and it's a stated objective so are you telling the opposition that oops i can't handle this shit anymore i can't take this that's not the message you want to give right you want to stand up tall and give a thumping reply that yes you did this the last time around now i have a answer for you anyway so that was uh, what mr rohit sharma missed the trick clearly again getting dismissed very cheaply looked out of sorts as a batter he is looking absolutely out of sorts right i think he is not yet settled into captaincy air quotes on that and that brought in mr surya kumar yadav now all the hoo ha fun frolic and yes you played well in england and on and some ipl matches this is the big match one expectation from top performers alpha performers is that you stand up tall when it matters in league matches and un- inconsequential matches with lesser opponents doesn't matter and this was a league match but the occasion was totally different the opposition was your arch rival this is where you had to make statement now if you hear some of the pakistani commentators saying surya kumar doesn't work with india he could away with uh, against pakistan right he could do well elsewhere but with pakistan he falls flat so we don't take him seriously already that narrative is begun to flow not that it should worry him or bother him but somewhere at the big stage he's got to raise his hand and be countered and yes you can appear all cocky and swaggish with the chewing gum and all that with all your expressions you do not cut a guy who's bowling 150 clicks I mean that's basic common sense, isn't it? You have to play straight, give a few deliveries. This was not supposed to be a hammer and tong, especially when you lost both the openers. It's supposed to build the innings. Where is that template gone, right? Or are you so scared, again in your mind, that if you play defensively, you will get out anyways? So you just kind of took a chance. So clearly, big match temperament yet to be tested is the message that is emerging out of. Mr. Surya Kumar Yadav's camp right now. Akshar Patel was a good ploy to be sent, but today 
he had a bad day right let's give it to the bloke he bats better than that and he clearly bowls better than that and so not much to say mr hardik pandya walks in again with all the swag and all the i am cool dude look and all that great as long as you walk the talk and that is where the game turned on its head at four down next to nothing at around the fifth over we were three down for 26 at around uh, the sixth over we were four down for 31 that is insane right the match is gone it's dead cricketing logic would recommend suggest that there is no recovery i mean how do you plan to get a 20 run consecutive 20 run over from this point it is beyond possible you don't have the batters to do it even though virat and hardik were there it, it will become a too much to ask so one did expect that from over 6 to over 16 it should at least be at around the 8 run 7 run 8 run 7 run mark over and then towards the end you go ballistic but they squeezed and they squeezed real hard the scoring was down to a trickle the run rate asking was above 13 and that's when single malt arrived on the screen i don't know if it was the mojo moment if it was the mind over matter the stars were aligned like they say when stuff has to happen it will happen never give up and that's what you see on your screen never give up i think it's or i think the harshest critics of mr virat kohli let's be honest here right the harshest critics of mr virat kohli were appalled at his such a long run of getting out cheaply i'm not talking about hundreds getting out cheaply getting out in a similar fashion outside the off stump outside the off stump expansive cover drive against the run of play freak dismissals it was appalling but nobody really uh, i mean if even if we quit for example last year after this captaincy uh, hoo ha if he had quit at that point he would still be counted as the all-time great you know the best of the best in the hall of fame and i would still bow down to his cricketing ability as a player for me it was his captaincy that was always in question he wasn't a great captain tactically in my view and i know there will be lots of virat fans who disagree with due respect clearly he made a lot of man management mistakes on the field and sometimes he did well but if i were to sum up his captaincy career i thought that was less than ideal not to say about his playing ability right? they are two different things he's a good player will never ever become a bad player unlikely right and so that's when you know you almost were rooting for him and if you see some of my previous tweets i was writing uh, especially before the t20 world cup uh, sorry the asia cup before the afghanistan match that you know once that turnaround starts to happen it's not that just one century that will turn things around to get back into the mojo levels you need six seven strong back-to-back -back innings it need not be a century but strong performances against tough oppositions in tough conditions and this was check 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 this is when his rec recovery is guaranteed this is when it begins his journey back to his prime mojo levels of 2017 2018 begins now it's not still there because his first part of the innings was absolute scratch right he struggled he hung in there he you know anchored down he just was playing unbelievable <laughs> cricket and it was just as a, as a spectator you can you can just sit back and get inspired you know just sit back and say huh you you inspire us with your fight and your resolve to succeed to resolve to hang in there no matter what people have said and so even the diehard fans who criticized his uh, manner of getting dismissed they were the first ones to turn around because they never doubted his playing ability it's the manner of dismissal dismissal and so this resolve began to show by the time he got to his 30s and 35s and now in yesterday's match he was sublime he transcended it it reminded me and i'm uh, holding my ears right now of the desert storm innings that mr tindulkar played 
you know it was as if he was in a zone uh, and and this is kind of a zone that he was in yesterday which which is quite unparalleled in cricketing parlance i think you can the closest i can remember is ben stokes at, at headingley to get into that zone uh, phase where you just you play you go through the motions you probably don't know what's going on but you just play and as if all this was recovery was not enough he goes on to play those sixes to mr haris rof oh my god i mean i just like just stop man there's nothing to say no adjectives will ever justify those two shots it is just an incredible and that's where you know the match in in the head you know i thought hang on even if he lose this match this is the moment where his if he even had any loss of confidence would come surging back that i will get across the line i will not give up and so by the time we got to, to the last over drama of like 20 things happening in one over and all the crazy things happening unbelievable presence of mind by mr ashwin he just <laughs> he left the ball outside the leg stump what balls you have man unbelievable that's a clap moment as well that leaving that delivery and if it by chance hit the pad or if the umpire adjudged adjudged it as oh the batsman moved so it's not a wide oh my god that would have pretty much been the end of the career his career right and great judge of length and direction and he spot on keeping your wits about in such situations is a skill in itself he's clearly the odd man out let's be honest in this team right from a fielding perspective he's very abysmally slow bowling has uh, well yet to be you know hitting his peak and batting you don't consider much it's his cricketing ability in the mind that is probably still warrants a place in the, in the team but it clearly be pitch dependent moving forward and so hats hats off to him and then when the final run was scored uh, mr virat kohli shed a tear i shed a few tears <laughs> that was when you know the single malt the tears and the heartbeats all coalesced into this one moment in one unison which in which he had defeated defeat and defeated the horrors of the past defeated the challenges the critiques the noises that would have happened in his head in his mind inside his mind i'm still uh, at a loss for words myself podcasting about it imagine what he must have gone through the motions while actually doing it i mean the adrenaline must be off the charts but that's that was the it moment for me that winning run when we are kohli pumping the <laughs> pumping his fist into the ground that really you know brought a lot of emotions and you only feel you you know a sense of awe a sense of inspiration a sense of oh my god this man is unreal that is magic that is just magic and you know one can go back to say the javed javed me and that last ball six and that was magic for pakistan so i can safely say that this is magic for this current indian team and uh, hopefully it will turn around uh, its fortunes and in winning icc tournaments it's a long way to go repeating similar performances consistently in key matches is still a story unchecked right there's one job done but there will be if you qualify then you, you you meet a top team in the semis and then the final so at least two more big matches big marquee matches uh, if assuming you get to the semis and so lot to look forward to but this was all mr philart kohli you know so kudos and now we we'll look forward to his next innings oh this must have hurt pakistan team pakistan a lot but you know what this pakistan team is not like its predecessors you know there are no characters which 
turn it into a personal animosity and anger and hatred and sledging. This is a very dignified Pakistan team and one can't help but notice the calmness, the dignity with which they accept what's going on. I just hope it remains like that. I don't know for how long, but I just hope it remains like that. They have earned the respect of a lot of cricketing fraternity across the world, not just in India, across the world. It's very difficult to not like somebody like Mr. Baba Razam, right? Comes across as the calm head on the shoulders. Let's play the game. Let's focus on the game kind of guy. And that's exactly what you want. You don't want characters like Mr. Shahid Afridi and uh, you know some of the previous, I don't even want to get into the names, Mr. Amir Sohail, kind of characters who kind of spoiled the spirit of the game. Right? They came and made all nonsense. And yeah, you were a better side at the time and you played better cricket. That's it. You don't need to uh, provoke another player or sledge another player. And of course, all of that changed in post the advent of Mr. Ganguly. But this Pakistani team has a lot of positives. They are a force to reckon with now. Clearly, till about 2016, 2017, they were into the wilderness, into the darkness, dark horses. Part of the resurgence was thanks to winning the Champions Trophy final in 2017 and the emergence of two, three players at the same time. All the ascendancies, think Australia, think West Indies, think Indian cricket, is when three or four players consistently arrived or arrived together and then consistently did well. And so Mr. Baba Razam, Mr. Shahin Shah Afridi, Mr. Um, Mahmud Riswan are some of these talents which have arrived on the scene at the same time. They will win some, they will lose some. So if you are a Pakistani fan listening to this, please take heart. You know, this is at the end of the day, the biggest cliche is it is a game. It is a league game. <laughs> Can you beat that? It's a league game. And yes, the emotions run high, but don't exit the field with a bitter taste in the mouth. You know, both teams played well and a lot of chances that have could have gone Pakistan's way and a lot of chances could have gone India's way. So let's not get there. Let's not make it into this, uh, I, I saw this trend called this snowball narrative of cheating and all that. It's not required. It's not there. Not because I, I'm from India. Just, just saying. Neutrally speaking, if you saw, if you, if you drew a straight line, uh, the, the, the point in time when the ball met the bat, it had not yet begun dipping. And by the time it would have crossed that zone because it was bold at that pace that the trajectory wouldn't have dipped below the waist so that's we have to make peace, peace with that even if not for a second if you believe that even if that was not a no ball sometimes when destiny is in your favor it just so happens it has you've been at the beneficiaries of it as well you've been at the receiving end of it as well right you've been lucky in many matches earlier where absolutely Unbelievable matches have been pulled out from the jaws of defeat. You have pulled out victories from the jaws of defeat. It has happened with India so many times, right? India was on the brink of winning, verge of winning, and you just pulled off a spectacular match. Think of that charge innings uh, by Mr. Uh, Javed Mianda, right? That is one classic example. And there were innings that happened, the test match in Chennai, uh, when you know Sachin fell short. And the many such instances. So... It evens out. I am 100% sure that in some other match, it, the wind will blow the other way. And so please take heart. Don't be disappointed. You are a stellar team with great talent. You have earned the respect. And in Rahul Dravid's, Mr. Rahul Dravid's language, you have banged the door down. Right? Hey, now you look up to us and we'll show you what we are made of. This is the time to show the world that you are not just a mercurial team, but you're also a very consistent team. This is where you prove it, right? Where, uh, so, kudos to you guys. A game well fought. Respect for the way you conducted yourself on the field. And hopefully it continues off the field. And uh, wish you all the best for this tournament. It is not over yet. So, make yourself believe when you have Mr. Hayden uh, supporting you. That is immense. So, good luck. Well, that's all the time I had for this edition of the Iron Man Experience. Hope you enjoyed this slow burn, easy on the ear, straight talk. There is no rhetorics, no political affiliations, no mumbo jumbo. It's a heartfelt conversation. Please, please, please do share with people who do care to listen to something like this or these kind of slow-paced content, if you will. 
And if you have any questions, thoughts, suggestions, all the links are below. You can reach me on my social media handles on Ionisms. That's A-A-Y-A-N-I-S-M-S, -S, Ionisms. Find me on Twitter or send me a mail. Or leave a comment right below. And share, subscribe and like if you really enjoyed what you heard. Till we meet the next time, cheers, stay well, stay safe and get your A game to work. This is your host, Ian, and you are listening to the Ironman Experience. Peace out.